Ah, oh, hello everybody, it's Megalithic here, otherwise known as Puglo Escobar, and in today's video we're taking a look at the Toreador, the Toreador, or whatever it's called, ladies and gentlemen, retailing for a price of $3.6 million, don't you know, and it is a uh, sports classic submarine style car, and what do you think of the styling? Absolutely hideous, I think. Okay, uh, well, uh, we're going to uh, have to cut out uh, the uh, initial standard lap, ladies and gentlemen, the un modified lap because there is so much to get through on this particular video and so we're going to take it straight on into the custom auto shop ladies and gentlemen and we're going to show you uh, uh, the aesthetic modifications that can be affected to this vehicle now it should be pointed out ladies and gentlemen this is a submarine car you know that is its primary function and it does uh, come uh, already equipped ladies and gentlemen with that particular facility as well as with machine guns uh, and homing launchers so yes it comes with homing launchers as standard ladies and gentlemen as a result it can be taken into your, uh, your office uh, to be modified. And there we go. So, we're a quick look at those modifications. Okay, well, we're going to take it back on out, ladies and gentlemen. This vehicle now has been fully modified across the board, and we're going to take a look at it. Okay, what do we think? Acceleration, not too bad for a sports classic, ladies and gentlemen. To be perfectly frank with you, handling is a little bit wallowy, you know. It's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a wet bag of fish, really, in my opinion, you know. But, uh, and, you know, that's all I can say about it. It's not, not the worst handling, ladies and gentlemen. Certainly for a sports classic. And when it's been upgraded, ladies and gentlemen, it is significantly better, you know. So the handling, not the worst in the world, a little bit wallowy, you know. Uh, acceleration, good, but it, ladies and gentlemen, it has got a boost. So, uh, yes, it has got a boost function. We're going to check it out right now. One, two, three, and whoosh, off we go. Okay, so top speed, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely incredible once you uh, deploy that boost. And it has got a rather ref uh, rather faster refresh uh, on it. So, yes, you can boost over and over and over again, ladies and gentlemen. But like I say, uh, uh, the uh, sort of primary function of this vehicle ladies and gentlemen is as a submarine car so let's go and have a take a look at that now we're going to drive on down to uh, uh, the pier here ladies and gentlemen this is where we normally have to come to a stop but in this vehicle we can keep going and there we go now we simply press right on the d-pad and we are a submarine car that's jolly good and yes ladies and gentlemen you can whilst underwater still use the boost facility so let's have a look at that there we go the boost function still operating underwater ladies and gentlemen and uh, when it's on water you can drive back upon the land ladies and gentlemen flip back into driving mode just like that you can drive along the land as uh to your heart's content as long as you like until you get bored ladies and gentlemen uh, and then you can just dip back into the water if you like but do be careful for swimmers there we go okay once in the water if you own yourself a Costco submarine ladies and gentlemen you can go and pay it a visit don't you know and this is where it gets really rather interesting uh if you go into where your uh kraken can be uh, allowed entry to the vehicle ladies and gentlemen Yes, even with a Kraken, ladies and gentlemen, it turns out there's a specific slot for it, and you can actually store your your Toriado or Torado, whatever it's called, in the back of your sub there, or in your, in your sub at least, uh, the underpart next to, uh, behind your uh, Kraken, ladies and gentlemen. And so I'm sure you'll agree that really is rather interesting, particularly if you own one of those submarines. You know, it makes it sort of worth it, in my opinion. Couldn't have given a damn otherwise. When I found out about this, I thought, well, bloody hell, yes, you know, absolutely fancy, my, fancy myself a piece of that action, you know. And so I did. I went and brought one, and here we are. Okay, uh, now when you uh, get on in, ladies and gentlemen, you can, of course, uh, take it out the same way that you came in. Uh, and once you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be out in the open ocean, don't you know? And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, jolly good floating around. Okay, so we're going to uh, take a look, ladies and gentlemen, we can go out in the open ocean. Uh, question is can we go up rivers and such forth we're going to go out uh, Cassidy Creek ladies and gentlemen the more sort of uh, turbulent river don't you know uh, on the game and we're going to uh, boost along there as you can see ladies and gentlemen boosting underwater we can boost up waterfalls and uh, do be careful if you are going to try to undertake that you know uh, but if you go rather slow and steady ladies and gentlemen you can make it all the way up Cassidy Creek up those waterfalls no problem whatsoever and you make it all the way up to the Alamo Sea uh, now there are a couple of bad things ladies and gentlemen uh, when it comes to locking on things you can lock on things on this surface ladies and gentlemen like helicopter there but it's the moment it takes off ladies and gentlemen the sea sparrow there yes we lose the lock and we can't get a missile lock and so there we go and even worse ladies and gentlemen whilst underwater they can lock on you up to pretty much any depth it would seem Okay, and of course, as they can lock onto you, what are they going to do? They're going to blow the living hell out of you. Now, you have got to be quite close to the surface for the missiles to hit, but still, not particularly good. Okay, uh, you can use it. I've tried using it in missions, ladies and gentlemen. You can sort of use it in the Meriwether sonar mission, you know, for the KO Perico heist. You can take down the boats, uh, but the helicopter, ladies and gentlemen, it simply can't be taken out, and it's going to take you out. So, yeah, sort of sodding useless there, really, you know. You can only hit things on the uh, on the water, not above it. Okay, whilst underwater, ladies and gentlemen, you can hop on out if you like and it will surface and you whilst it's in the water you can jump back inside so there we go that's rather good ladies and gentlemen i'm sure you'll agree 
Now when it comes to missiles, ladies and gentlemen, they're not too bad, you know, they're not as flawless as the deluxo ones which seem to hit absolutely everything, uh, they can miss vehicles when driving towards you at high, uh, at high speed, uh, but yes, they can take uh, generally vehicles on the ground and vehicles in the air down, ladies and gentlemen, so not too bad. When it comes to defense, ladies and gentlemen, one RPG and down it goes, so not too good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, we brought it on up to Sandy Shoresman, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it up against the Stromberg, ladies and gentlemen, now actually we pointed out that the Toriado, the Toriado, or whatever the hell it's called, ladies and gentlemen. It does have a boost function, so we're not going to be deploying the boost function for these uh, these races, ladies and gentlemen, because it wouldn't be uh, fair whatsoever. Uh, and so, uh, whilst uh, I mean, the, the, the Toriado, the Toriado, whatever the hell it is, would win, is what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got the Stromberg, ladies and gentlemen, the other submarine car on this game, released as part of the Doomsday Heist, you know, the Ocelot Stromberg. And it just looked like the Toriado, or whatever it is, getting in the lead there. Uh, but no, actually, ladies and gentlemen, it turns out the Ocelot uh, Stromberg is a little bit faster, and that really is rather surprising. Okay then, uh, the next vehicle, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go straight to the uh, Gorotti Itali RSX, what we uphold now to be the finest car on GTA Online. It has taken the crown from the GTO, don't you know? Uh, we're going to see what uh, what happens if you take a very, very fast car like the uh, RSX, ladies and gentlemen, and put it up against the uh, the Torado, or uh, as I say, whatever the hell it's called. And you can, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, it absolutely demolishes it. Uh, Mr. Raccoon is boosting down the back there, but he's simply not going to catch me. Like I say, we haven't boosted from the start of the race, ladies and gentlemen, because if you boost from the start, of the race that's what happens yes absolutely it's going to destroy it isn't it so there we go i'll perhaps uh, take this opportunity now ladies and gentlemen to point out that all of the other vehicles are being driven by mr raccoon you know uh, his name is the bromby he has a channel of his own it is called the bromby if you type that into youtube you're going to find it when you do that he's got some rather good videos on that okay so yes ladies and gentlemen uh, when the uh, when the torado or the torado whatever the hell it is called uh, is using the boost function ladies and gentlemen the uh, one of the fastest or the fastest supercar in the game simply can't keep up with it Okay, so we're going to bring out uh, the Proton R88, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this has got a boost function. It is one of the uh, F1 style cars, but it only has a single boost. It refreshes whilst braking, uh, so effectively it can only be used once, you know, in, a, in, in, this, uh, in any sort of straight shot. Uh, and we're going to see how it stacks up now against the Torado. And as I say, the, the, the Torado has got a very quick refresh on its boost function there, ladies and gentlemen. And that is going to serve to bring it all the way alongside and directly in front of the Proton, ladies and gentlemen. And we can boost a little bit more, but it's not going to help him there. We go. So yes, uh, the Toriado, the Toriado, whatever the hell it is called, uh, beats the F1 style cars. Okay, so next ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring out the Vigilante. This is another boost style vehicle with a very quick uh, replenishing boost there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we're going to see uh, how, the, how this stacks up now against the new submarine vehicle. Okay, and as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, yes, so the Toriado, the Toriado, or whatever the hell it is called, uh, can't stand up, ladies and gentlemen. It can't stand up to the Vigilante. It's going to absolutely destroy it in terms of speed. Okay, well, we've got the Scramjet as well, you know. I forget which one's boost and which one's jumping. There we go. Good bouncing off down the track. Not intended whatsoever, but it's been trying to you anyway. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a look. It's got another quick refresh on this uh, boost. Not quite as fast as the uh, as the Vigilante there. Uh, but we're going to see how, how this uh, matches up against the Torado or the Torado or whatever the hell it may be called. Okay then, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, it's much closer. If you look at the minimap there, much closer. But no, that Scramjet has got it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so what do we think, ladies and gentlemen? 3.6 million dollars can't lock on out the air you know effectively pretty damn useless you know uh, should you buy this sudden thing uh, absolutely useless completely overpriced uh, no no use to it whatsoever goes in the back of the Costco ladies and gentlemen gotta buy it now haven't we so yes go waste your money it's absolutely useless but why not what do you say sorry how bloody right there was three of them that time I know who to play right it was the bloody raccoon well I do hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching